I want to go fast! What this little dude lacks in horsepower, it sure makes up with firepower. Nope, you're not seeing things. That's a Vulcan mounted to a Prius. But why would you want to do something like that? Um, cause America? The M61 Vulcan is a rotary cannon that can be found mounted to fighter jets like the F-22 Raptor, or in this case, sourced from an F-16. It fires a 20 millimeter round up to 6,600 rounds per minute. At $27 per round, you're looking at an astonishing $2,970 per second, or just under $180,000 for every minute of sustained fire. Mounting something that generates 36,000 foot-pounds of energy requires a little bit more than JB Weld to get on the car. This project took over 160 man hours to remove the interior and fabricate an all new floor pan, roll cage, and mounting system to handle all that torque. Black Rifle Coffee's hybrid vehicle can facilitate mounting other weapon systems like M134s, M2s, M60s, you know, just to keep things versatile. So, what would you like to see put down range in front of this little dude? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to Full Mag so you don't miss out on any of the insane videos coming here soon. I'm Richard Ryan. All right, so, boom, green screen to green screen. This totally isn't a pickup shot. I put all that gear up so fast. I'm at our new location here for Black Rifle Coffee in San Antonio, Texas, and I wanna give you guys a behind the scenes look of all the stuff that went into making this Prius Vulcan project happen. Uh, this is a project that I've wanted to do for the better part of like 10 years, but just because of the budget required, all the fabrication and costs associated with it, I just never really could do it. And this year we were sitting around, we were talking about some interesting projects, some fun, exciting things that we could do for Black Rifle Coffee, and we're like, hey, Let's finally make this thing happen. If you're not familiar with full autos and how expensive they are, something like a Mac 10 will cost you thousands of dollars, an M16, an M2 will set you back like tens of thousands of dollars for a transferable one. Something like a minigun, you'll spend 100,000 plus. Something like a Vulcan is essentially priceless if you can even find one or build one. So long story short, a lot of people came together to help make this project possible. A lot of work, a lot of time, effort, and energy. And I keep talking, so let's go. We got ground to cover. Richard Ryan. Dangerous Bob, how's it going, man? It's going, man, what's going on? Hey, how's the wife and kids? Uh, they missed me, I think. I haven't That's about awesome. Them. Hey, can you and Pat help me uh, mount an M61 Vulcan to a Prius? Can you guys help me mount a Vulcan to a Prius? Yeah. Sweet, I'll call you back. Okay, okay, thanks, bye. Thank you, sir.
and transition. That's the fastest travel time ever to Las Vegas. Uh, <laughs> I'm out here at Battlefield Vegas. I'm meeting Pat and Bob from Hamilton and Sun Firearms. And if you watch any of these reality shows where they're restoring big bore weapons or you know obscure historic firearms and things along those lines, generally these guys had a hand in it. Um, Ron, the owner here at Battlefield Vegas, he sourced an M61 Vulcan, a demilled one, from an F-16 fighter jet. So they're a little bit different from the other 20 millimeters that you'll see me fire, like the Anzio actually fires with a firing pin, but the M61 Vulcan has electric primers. So we don't even know if the gun's gonna work or not. So we have to test that out before we go spending money on a car to mount it to and fabricating a bunch of stuff. So today's kind of like a critical part just to see if this thing's even doable or not. So let's get to it. Bob and Pat have Vulcan here in the shop. We have the hydraulic feed system and the drum off to the side. And since the primers are electronically fired, we need to hook the M61 up to a power supply to see if that will pop them or not. And since there isn't a motor hooked up to turn the barrels, Pat's gonna run the system with a cordless drill. You know, like it was meant to be fired. <laughs> Here comes the fun part. So the electric primers went inside the gun. Now is the little bit of a tricky part. I found a Prius on Craigslist for 2,000 bucks. Come on, come on. The owner swears up and down that it'll make it to Arizona. So Pat's gonna try to drive it out there. He's gonna gut the interior out, put an all new floor pan, like reinforced and a roll cage. Because this gun, it generates so much torque. I think it's like 35,000 foot pounds of energy. It's a lot for a Prius. So we gotta reinforce the crap out of this thing. Hopefully uh, it can absorb all of that energy between the suspension and the car and everything. There's a lot of in theory variables here. So uh, we just gotta get it out to Arizona and see what happens. All right, here we are on day one of Project Prius build. Uh, my name is Bob Bagando. Over here we have Pat Hamilton. A few weeks ago, Richard Ryan called me up and said, can you guys put a Vulcan on a Prius? And I said, hell yeah, we could put a Vulcan on a Prius. Can you guys help me mount a Vulcan to a Prius? Uh, yeah. Today's big thing is getting the, uh, the car gutted um, to start preparing for a cage. All right, the bending begins. Will be the first section of the cage starting to kind of come together as a cage. I'm not gonna bore you with all the bending and grinding and cutting. We're getting ready to chop the roof off this thing. Uh, Pat's been welding fairly feverishly lately. We now have a sweet sunroof in the Prius. Uh, I think we're, uh, I don't know, ready for the next thing. All right, Pat's over there building a mount for the gun. A lift attempting to uh, put the gun on the car. That's kind of awkward because I'm trying to pull barrels of gun while we move heavy ass gun with forklift at the same time. All right, we got a gun on a car. Pretty darn cool. Shop dogs are the best. Yes, I know you smiling. <laughs> <laughs> what we're working on specifically today is our motor issue. Um, originally these things ran off hydraulic motors um, and they used enormous hydraulic pumps. This system is not gonna work well in our Prius setup. 
Um, we don't need a, the giant hydraulic pump to try to run this motor. So we're converting this thing to use an electric motor. The trick was this spline gear right here. Trying to find one of these was uh, pretty difficult. Had to have that one made. Hopefully we will have this thing spinning and turning once we get our motor mounted up and some new brackets made. So back to work. We have our new motor on. We're gonna run it off the jumper box to see uh, what this thing can do. Um, this is all just before we bolt everything together, kind of a test run to see uh, what this thing does. I'm gonna get farther back in case it explodes. All right, go for it. Cut it off and hit it again. I think we're ready to test some ammo in this thing. So just 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 so every everyone knows, uh, I like to say in theory a lot. Bob says in theory way more than I do. Yes. Way more. Yes, I do. <laughs> a lot of stuff we work on is well, we think it's gonna work. I mean, in theory, it should work. Uh, and then you don't find out until you push the button or press the, the trigger. Exactly. We just got the gun about hooked up, working on the wiring. Go ahead and power on, Pat. Right. That's cooking. All right, we're trying to pop three primers. We have no projectiles in the cases. Uh, whenever your game, go ahead and fire. Switch is on, power is on, primer's on, fire. Oh. Our initial testing of primers did not go as well. Um, we had some hits, some misses. Um, obviously, there's something kind of wrong with the electrical system. We're figuring it all out right now. Got a little bit more voltage this time and three cases with primers. Whenever you're ready, go for it. Here we go. And that was three rounds. All right, I guess today is test fire day. So now we have Pat trying to figure out how the hell we're gonna load it on the trailer. But that is a crazy looking gun. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. How'd it go? Right, the thing works, but it is scary. Yeah? Why's that? What happened? Uh, no, just to hear the, to be in person and hear the rip of that gun going off, it's just unreal. Um, you know, we got some okay video, but it doesn't know justice. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the windshield, as expected, did not last. So what happened with the windshield? Uh, it blew out. <laughs> so, I, I guess that kind of nixes the idea of actually shooting it from within the vehicle. Yeah, yeah. So we, we kind of figured that the overpressure would be be an issue. Um, Matt Best just uh, put in a gym at his house, and I think he has some leftover gym mats or flooring. So maybe what we'll do is we'll cut some of that up and, and bring that out to uh, the desert with us and see if that, that helps... Um, I don't know, mitigate some of that overpressure from damaging the screen and everything. So what do you think the car's survivability will be? I mean, like... Not good, dude. Really? Yeah, I mean, this thing, it ripped that car back uh, fairly substantially. I don't know what's going to happen with that transmission. We're going to have to either put it in neutral and let it roll or something. I don't know. That's a good call. Pretty badass, though. Yeah. That's a good call. Yeah, I don't know. If nobody's Nobody's ever done anything like this before, so... I guess I guess we're kind of figuring it out as we go. <laughs> All right. Well, sweet. Uh, let's 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 just uh, chat here in a bit, and we'll plan on meeting up in Vegas. Okay. Awesome. Sounds good. All right. Later. Sweet. I haven't even had time to unload the freaking tires and wheels from the vehicle, and Casey's already got the freaking stuff. <laughs> <laughs>
make myself useful to some degree. You, we, we, we technically don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, we don't. We never know what's going to happen. This is kind of almost the finishing touch, right? Yeah. It, what do you it, think? I, I think that uh, it's going to be interesting one way or another. Yeah? Yeah. Boom! Pay no, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. He just, we, we put a lot of time and effort into this project and he just put a lot of time and effort into mounting that Vulcan onto, what would you mount it on? The British FB432. How much? We made I, it good. <laughs> <laughs> how, much, how much time did you put into it? In, in one week? Uh, whole week. Like literally whole week. How much 20, time? 24 hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> he's hallucinating right now. He has no idea where he's at. He's just been roaming the parking lot this entire time. This project's taking a ton, a ton of work. And we got, we got Pat and Bob here hanging out. And I just wanted to talk with them real quick before we close this out because we learned a lot of stuff from this entire project. I mean, there was a lot of fabrication, a lot of things went wrong, some things went right, and uh, we were able to pull the video off and everything. So Bob, what was the most challenging thing for you? All right, we had the two big things were figuring out how to pop electric primers fast and making sure that the track worked as it fed the gun. We had obviously didn't have any of the mounts or anything from the F-16. So making sure that the, the, the it feeds without a belt. You have your feed chute which holds all your ammunition and typically it feeds from a drum. And it's a, you have a conveyor belt that picks up ammunition from the drum, runs it through the feed chute into the gun. The gun then puts it back into the belt, it spins around, goes all the way through the system again and puts your empties back into the drum. What's your favorite part about it? Learning about it because we came into this thing, we knew a little bit about mini guns um, and just attacking the system and figuring out how it works and the engineering that went into the guys that originally built the system just blows us away and uh, just spend time and breaking things and putting it back together and figuring out how to make it work just it's what makes this job so much fun. Dangerous Bob played it safe this time except for the time you got in the back seat and fired the gun didn't know if we were gonna have soft tissue damage Dangerous Bob Wait. after that. Oh man <laughs> we, can, we, we can't build that gun and not shoot it from within the car. <laughs> so good, so good. Pat, <laughs> what was what was the most challenging part for you? I mean, you spent probably more time fabricating than anybody else on this job. Yeah, I think the most difficult part was making sure that I can get the roll cage mounted to the car. So basically, we designed the cage to actually take the back force of the gun, and we had to design it that way because we didn't want it just all of a sudden just crushing the cage and coming out of the car and messing the car up or whatever. We have no clue what this was gonna do. So I basically just built the cage to have a backwards force. How far away were you standing when you guys tested it out in Arizona? Bob, maybe feet. Me, miles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the biggest thing was actually noticing that the feed mechanism of the gun needed assistance and unfortunately we weren't using the full system like it was properly designed and we found out some problems and had to solve those problems in the process it was just sometimes we put too much ammo in the belt and it was too heavy for the gun to actually feed the gun so it's crazy it's crazy it, especially especially considering how much ammunition can run through this gun and just how much like even when we first started 
uh, this project, we thought, all right, fifteen dollars around. How much? How much did you think ammo was going to be? Like ten bucks around? Yeah, we're hoping for ten bucks around. Hoping for ten dollars around, and here we are finishing everything up, and Ron finally got uh, General Dynamics back to him about sourcing some uh, legit Vulcan ammo at $27 a round. So this thing is capable of just draining a bank account like BAM! You're looking at that. So we learned a lot of things in this whole project. So you know, if you, you want to see some more stuff like this every now and then, you might want to like hit that like button. You might want to share the video and show some love because this was a lot of effort and you know, realistically speaking, projects like this, I, I can't do all the time. The budgets are just through the roof. Uh, if it wasn't for Black Rifle Coffee helping you know, make this stuff happen, you know, Hamilton and Son Firearms, Battlefield Vegas, everybody kind of coming together to make this happen, it, it, it wouldn't have. I've been wanting to do this for like 10 years. So if you guys really like this, make sure you hit the like button, drop a comment, say something that you might want to see shot by the Vulcan or whatever. Just let me know in the comments below and uh, maybe share share the video, show some love, <laughs> and uh, I'll see, I would say, I'll see you next week, but we all know, we all know that we'll probably end up on another project and be like, ah, I'll see you in like, maybe twice a week, twice every two years, I don't know, we'll see what happens. <laughs>now that you've seen how it was made make sure you jump over to black rifle coffee and mbest 11x youtube channels and check out these other videos that we made with the car i filmed a lot of videos over the last few months so keep checking back in i may end up uploading a couple of videos a week so until then i'll see y'all next time